Hey, scholars, it's good to be back with you. Got a great topic for today. We're going to use statics to show why boxes tip over. Now, I've told you before that statics is the most useful class ever, and boy, it is. And we've all experienced boxes tipping over, usually by accident and sometimes with regrettable results. So let's start by looking at a free body diagram so we, we know what to expect here when we do an experiment, OK? So here's a free body diagram. There's a box. Now I'm missing one thing here. Where's the center of gravity? Let's put the center of gravity in the middle. So the box is loaded uniformly. Whatever's in it is uniform. And so the center of gravity is right in the middle. And we'll call that the weight. And later, I'm going to call that distance there D. It'll, this becomes important in a bit. But to start, let's talk about what happens when the box first starts to tip. Now, I've got F1Y and F2Y I'm on the bottom here. What I'm showing here is that the floor is pushing up on the box only at two corners. Really? Is that how boxes sit? Hang on. Here's a tool a box I got from Amazon. It's a toolbox in here. And if I were to put that on the floor, it would sit, you know, the, the board floor would bear the whole, you know, bottom load of the box there. It'd be distributed. And th this would be a distributed load. So why did I put them there? Well, if the box starts to tip, when it just starts to tip, it's up on one edge, either this one or this one. Now, because the force is going to the left, it'll be this edge. And when that happens, the entire weight of the box is being borne by that one edge. Well, I don't care about the condition where it's just sitting vertically on the floor. I care about the condition where it's about to tip. So that's why I put the force there. When it's about to tip, that force goes to zero. And I'll call this at tipping. Okay. Now that doesn't mean the box is tipping all the way over. It just means now it's on one edge. Right? That's what's going on there. So if I were to take this box and push it and let go, it didn't, if I didn't push it too far, it would come back to vertical, wouldn't it? So what happens when the box is tipping over? This free body diagram doesn't explain what's happening when a box tips over. Let me change this. I'm going to take this and I'm now going to draw it at an angle. So just give me a second here, okay? Okay, look what just happened. The center of gravity moved as this box started to tip. And let's give this an angle. We usually give this an angle with a Greek letter, so let's, let's call that theta maybe. So at this angle, theta, whatever this is, that distance between the upward force supporting the box and the downward force of the weight, the distance here, it's getting a little busy, but let's call this D, is going to zero. When D goes exactly to zero, that box will balance on its corner. When D goes negative, over it goes. Now, practically speaking, can you really get D to be exactly zero? Well, not really. But that's the point. As the box starts to rotate, distance D goes from positive to zero to negative. And when D goes negative, that means when the center of gravity is on the other side of this, it tips over. Seems easy, OK? So what happens when you move the center of gravity up and down? Instinctively, we know that if the center of gravity is low, things are hard to tip over. And if the center of gravity is high, things are easier to tip over. We talk about things being top heavy. Well, what top heavy means is the center of gravity is high. That distance there, which is right now in the center box, you know, I could load the box if the center of gravity was up there. And this appears in lots of places in life. Um, as I'm recording this right now, the most popular car in the United, electric car in the United States is a Tesla. Don't know how that'll age, but for right now, that's what it is. Now, the batteries in Tesla are heavy, but they're placed at the very bottom of the car, right? You know, below your feet. So the center of, a gra of gravity of a Tesla is very, very low. And what uh, the safety testing people found out is that the center of gravity of that car is so low, they had big problems getting it to tip in a rollover test. They couldn't get it to roll over. Now, perhaps they eventually did, but initially the test, they'd get it, they'd, they'd throw it off a cradle at, at a speed, 
tire would dig in and roll up like this and come back down on its wheels, whereas almost all other cars would have rolled over. Okay, and that's because the center of gravity was low. Well, this is a lot less dynamic in that, than that, but it works the same way. So here it is on the board. Let's go try an experiment. So you can see I made a little sort of test box for us. It's made out of wood and I left the front and the back off it so we can see inside of it. I made it out of wood and you can see on the bottom right there, there's a light piece of pine. Here there's a light piece of pine and here there's a piece of heavy wood called lambu. It's much heavier than pine. So the center of gravity of this box is not in the center. Where would the center of gravity be? Well, let's check. I do this. Yeah, right about there. So the center of gravity is right about there. Maybe we could put a mark on there. Let's try this one more time. Center of gravity, okay. Center of gravity is about there. Okay. So the center of gravity of this box is definitely not in the middle, and that's by design. Okay. So let's tip it over. Rather than measuring a force, let's measure an angle. So I can push, and you can see now the weight of the box is borne by the edge of the box, but if I let go, it goes back to vertical. That means the center of gravity hasn't gone past that one edge. Well, how far can I go? It's starting to get light, light, and right about there. There's where it tipped over. Let's reset it and turn the box upside down so the center of gravity is below the center rather than above the center of the box. There we go. All I did now was flip it over and I put it back in exactly the same spot. So hopefully that will make a comparison easy. And let's try the same experiment. So start pushing, start pushing, and again, it'll come back to vertical. And let's keep, let's see how, what angle I can go to now. That's pretty far, and it's still coming back. So push, 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 there's the angle, and right there we go. Notice that the angle it went to before it finally tipped over was higher. That's because the center of gravity was lower. So let's put this back. This way, the center of gravity is below the middle of the box. This way, the center of gravity is above the middle of the box. This tipped at a lower angle than this did. All I had to do was flip the box over. So if you want to make a part, a box or something, that won't tip over easily, keep the center of gravity low. Pretty straightforward. Hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.